Good morning, folks. Good morning. All right. Let me see if Sage is able to make it. Good morning. Happy New Year. I guess this is the first first perf meeting after the New Year, so Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy Year of slowed down CPUs. <laughs> yep. I'm not excited about how much that might hurt us. It's the year of stuff on the desktop. <laughs> that that sounds like it might be a curse. Um All right, is the pull request list up to date? It should be. Or at least moderately so. Yeah. Um all right. Uh, let's see, there's an updated version of the patch that adds um, QAT support. That's the processor offload stuff in your Intel chips. Um, it's based on an earlier patch from Sean Peng, I think. Um, and looks like it's in flight. I'm not sure what the current status there is. Looks like it needs review. <laughs> um, okay. There's that. Um, I added a, I have a pull request that adds some minimal tracing to um, Blue Store and the OSD. This is um, in order to generate a trace to share with the cache physics folks, which have um, they're building a like a SAS type thing that does what um, it's that paper that we saw at fast several years ago, Josh and Greg. It's the one that does. Um, a um, cache miss reliability curve. What is it? Cache MRC miss rate curve. Um, so you can size your caches, but it's you know all improved and all that stuff. Um, so there's that. Um, that actually um, was interesting. So the way that I was the the way that they're setting it up is it would be it's like a um, you set up um, something that will feed traces to an agent that feeds it back to their um, like SAS hosted service thing or whatever, and then it gives you back all the all the nice information, um, which is nice because licensing issues sort of go away. The way that their their preferred way of collecting traces is based on um, is it open tracing, um, and the whole conversation led me to. Um, so they they want to they want to basically have these probes where they're they're sampling frequently initially to build up the initial data set and then they sample less frequently over time and so um in sort of the steady state you're actually sampling at a very very coarse rate um but they're looking at open tracing and this project called um jaeger which is the is in the cncf now it's sort of the new version of um um uh zipkin that came out of Uber. Um, but I don't really understand what that means for us, if it means that we need to like generate different types of trace points, if that, if it's That's just the like format, the- Same format as uh, Zipkin traces. Um, I think okay. you can actually have like some extra annotations with uh, Jaeger's format, but um, they might want to take advantage of in the future, but it's not okay. necessary. 
Okay. But as far as like being able to get to the point where there's something that is um, attaching to a roaming process and like collecting trace data and sampling it and doing something with it, I don't know what what is. Do we just do we do anything? <laughs> is it just <laughs> using LTT and G to do that, or is there like some library that or a specific type of I don't know. I don't understand how it works. So, um, but it kind of reopened that question for me. I'm not sure if it feels like we should have some plan or understanding of what direction we want to be going in, mm -hmm. um, especially since we're about to be refactoring a bunch of stuff and probably want to sprinkle it with trace points instead of with debug messages. Yeah. Um, does this overlap with with blocking type of stuff at all? We try to have yeah, it's exactly the yeah. same type of stuff. It's the same thing. Yeah, exactly so the same. Stuff that works using, so we should have designed a project to sort of re revisit the the, the blocking band flow. Yeah. End, I guess. Yep. So I guess the meta question is: um, Is there somebody who's interested in this A and B actually has time for this that can sort of figure out what needs to be done? Um, and already get from here to there. Seems like if we have some limited window of time next year, you know, a couple of people from my team could help. We're done. Okay. It. okay. All right. So anyway, that pull request is probably going nowhere, um, but it was enough to generate a trace just to send to them to just see what, what data they generate. So I did that. Um, let's see, there's something that was merged with caches. On the barrel head. I never know what Adam's pull requests actually do until you go read them. RGW cache improvements. That's all RGW. Um, it's one that's getting revoked or you know, adjusted. But okay. Yeah, uh, we ended up having to iterator invalidation didn't work quite the way I thought it did. So we're going to uh, either pull in a different LRU or just make that one use an intrusive list, so it doesn't allocate as. I mean, sounds good. We should discuss it. Really, yeah, I think the LRU stuff in there is m messy, but but the, but the multiple indexes is, or indices rather is a different thing, and that we need that. Yeah, intrusive list is probably. Is that using the that ancient LRU code that came from CephFS? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, we're that gonna, was. We're gonna, we're gonna read back to the whole thing, but it's gonna be. You know, okay. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, that's like one of the first headers that was added to the sub project. <laughs> Super old. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, recovery optimizations for overwrites. Um, that looks like that needs a review. Um, to be exciting if we can like, finally get that over the line. People have been working on that for a while. Um, Josh, are you gonna you're gonna review that one? That's what they requested at least. This is one nine five six nine. Um, there's another RGW one. I think I started taking a look at that again. There's um, quite a lot of history there. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's some cleanups from Igor that look good. I think they're reviewed and ready to go, ready to test. Um, there's a change to the Rados bench command that like I have I don't care about <laughs> mostly. <laughs> So um, looks like people looked at it too, so that's good. Um, reverting a proc size. So it sounds like the takeaway is that we're stuck with um, an order in list size function for the lifespan of rel 7, CentOS 7, because of ABI issues with the build tool chain. So, um, so I think we still need to fix that pull request. We need to do clean it up and merge whatever version of that makes sense. And also keep an eye out for other cases where we're calling um, size on a list. Um, I think there's at least one other instance in the cache, the shared cache code that needs to be fixed. Um, yeah, the sharded op key thing, I don't think we're going to merge that. Um, and I forgot about this one from a long time ago. Um, Jean Peng did it, a thing that will optionally use a single callback for both op commit and op applied instead of two callbacks. Um, but 
we already merged the thing I did that makes the unapplied asynchronous callback. Um, so I'm not sure that that one makes sense or is going to be helpful anymore. Yeah, I think that's not going to make sense. Um, that's it for pull requests. Uh, should we talk about the async read stuff and then see what else? Sure. Um, I can talk about these or Radislav, if you want to talk about the the pull request in general and kind of your thoughts on it, that that's fine too. You might actually have more insight into kind of what what you've done and what you think is going on here. But either way. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm working on async reads. Uh, some parts of it uh, are, are already done. We have uh, async read in blue store, and, but uh, at the moment it's, uh, it's the decision whether to go synchronously or asynchronously is made by uh, by client of the interface by by the primary log PG. Uh, so as a result, we are doing also asynchronous reads. We are starting the, uh, the asynchronous machinery also for cave in situations uh, where our data are actually uh, in, uh, available in cache in blue store caches. So uh, in such case, it's expected to have a, a performance penalty, right? I'm trying to address that with uh, delegating the decision whether to go synchronously or asynchronously to the uh, to the object store implementation. Uh, I've pushed a branch uh, yesterday on my GitHub. Uh, at the moment, it's uh, it consists uh, changes of uh, at the, made at the blue store layer. Uh, the missing part is uh, is the primary lock uh, PG uh, employment of uh, such new interface. I mean, read transaction. Read transaction allow, uh, is some kind of aggregate uh, over uh, over uh, reads that could that can um, be performed asynchronously, but uh, caller isn't guaranteed to uh, to have. Uh, to have uh, the async machinery started, and uh, this decision is made in Bluster. Uh, also, I, I've, today I've got a very, very good results uh, from uh, performance uh, results from uh, Mark. It seems we got uh, some uh, some uh, performance uh, regression in uh, in writes in. 100% pure uh, write scenario, which uh, excludes the possibility that uh, the Bistro I of red uh, is uh, uh, is busy with handling uh, the read completion instead of doing uh, instead of uh, doing uh, the write uh, related things. Radoslav, one thing I just noticed, um, I, I wasn't thinking when we were talking earlier, but it appears to me when I'm looking at these, that the random write regression is happening both in master and in your branch whenever we are using unbuffered uh, reads and writes in Blue Store. So if we look at if you look at that graph again, um, where we see the the regression. One second. I can actually. I, right now, I'm uh, taking a look uh, on uh, mixed random. Uh, mixed uh, random. One second. Random. Okay. Do you want to uh, share your screen? Right. Yep, I will. Okay. Uh, one second, please. Uh, can you see? Yes. I'm talking. I'm. Uh, I'm talking about random right uh, diagram. Oh, those two uh, curves here. Uh, those. The, yep. Exactly. Those, Only about those. those. Those graphs are kind of screwed up, actually, compared to mine. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, hmm. 
Let me let me share my screen. Um, okay. Because okay. I think Open Office or something there is is actually not um, not displaying this properly. Um, let's see. This one. Okay. Can can you see the screen now? Yep. Can see. Yep, can see. Oh, it looked to me like on on the one that you were looking at, the IO size um, uh, was was not the 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 axis was not displaying properly. I wonder if I can zoom. <laughs> this in. Okay. Well, that would that would be uh, yeah unfortunate. All right. So what I think is is interesting, look at the sequential write um, case here, where it's not necessarily a dramatic effect from using your branch. Um, it's It appears that if we look at both the, the yellow and the green uh, lines, which are for buffered, uh, basically using uh, buffered reads and writes in BlueStore, um, versus disabling those the 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 maroon and and light blue lines that there's a much bigger effect um, from from that versus using your branch. Do you see? Yep, can see. But actually, the the reverse is true at small I/O sizes for for well, not sorry, the reverse is true, but that um, um, the the lines cross essentially. So that um, uh, using unbuffered is actually faster for small writes. So it seems like this is having a much bigger effect than your PR is, at least in this particular case. Yep, could be. Um, but still, uh, in sequential writes, we have uh, a point where uh, around uh, around the, on the on the right side of uh, the sequential write uh, diagram, it seems we have some regression. Uh, in uh, blue store uh, uh, in blue store uh, in blue stores um, do read uh, method that is that is also used uh, on the right path okay it's, it's called from uh, do small writes of uh, of the of the of uh, blue store so it it seems that if we if we uh, uh, if we neglect uh, this performance regression, the the, the the results could be much better. We made some refactoring. No... Go ahead. We made some refactoring uh, of the uh, do read of Bluestar before uh, implement before uh, in, uh, before starting poking with uh, the async uh, read stuff. And uh, maybe the regression uh, was introduced. Uh, was introduced then. If so, this would be good because uh, because uh, at the moment we have a superposition of uh, of the of results coming from the refactor and async uh, stuff. If in some cases this, the the async stuff is much more performant, then if if neglecting uh, negative results of uh, of uh, the refactor, the overall result could be much better. I think. One question I had for you, Radoslav, is um, in this random read case when we have your branch enabled um, for very small IOs, there's a, a pretty clear trend where it, the performance drops that we don't see, um, well, specifically with unbuffered. So when we disable buffered IO um, in Blue Store compared to the master branch. Any any thoughts on, on that? Uh, maybe, one second. I will I will be speculating. I need more time to uh, to understand this properly. I think. 
Uh, yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, I'm going to try to rerun some of these tests and also look at it with um, the wall clock profiler to see if I can tell if there's anything interesting going on. Um, but both in the buffered case and in the unbuffered case, especially with small IOs, it looks like um, the 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 async read PR is, is slower. But we could try to uh, avoid doing uh, async uh, in uh, such a situation and just go uh, with uh, the traditional uh, synchronous way. Uh, the, uh, the, com the incoming uh, patches for the, for the decision delegation would allow to do it, us to do that. I think that's, that's a, well, at least from my perspective, I, I think that's a good backup plan, but I'd really like to understand why is the case. Maybe, um, maybe there's a way we can fix it. Yep, definitely. That would be, that would be the best uh, scenario. So going down to random writes, um, again, this, um, this at, at for large writes, it looks to me like this is more, um, not, not strictly due to your PR, but more due to um, the difference between um, uh, using, uh, enabling or disabling um, buffered reads and writes in Blue Store. Do you see? Uh, yep. I'm right. <laughs> Those results, uh, <laughs> I uh, I I was uh, taking a look on uh, on your results uh, using uh, Google uh, spreadsheet, and now those they are in Open Office. They are looking completely different. <laughs> yeah, I need to, yeah, I need, for... yeah, really need to rethink uh, all those things. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I've had a lot of trouble with Google spreadsheets and Open Office not interacting well together. So I. I guess I just usually try to use Open Office, but even Open Office, it, sometimes it it really screws up formatting. It's really irritating. Um, one one thing that's um, when we were talking in stand up about the five twelve k random write drop. That's what I'm talking about right there. That that point where with the five twelve k IO size, we see this this um, regression compared to um, uh, versus file store. Um, there's this kind of drop and then it recovers. And I'm very curious if that's due to the blob size being the same, but I'll have to, I'll have to run more tests and try to diagnose what's going on there. But anyway, um, the the mixed results I think are probably um, uh, sort of similar to the the other ones um, for sequential mixed I/O. Um, kind of our our uh, the, the the sequential read is dry, kind of dropping everything down a little bit, but your branch is doing better than than other things I think. Um, and then again, we're we're faster for in Blue Store for random. Um, IO again with this kind of drop at 512k. So anyway, that's um, when I drop at 8k, that's below the min alloc size, right? Because the min alloc size for for uh, uh, solid state disks is 16k. So for whatever reason, um, when we drop to 8 there, it looks like we're seeing a, a pretty big drop before it recovers with smaller IOs. Um, maybe it's worth re reinvestigating whether or not 16k is the right place to be cutting over but um anyway yeah that's that's that for for folks that are really you know horribly interested in this stuff there's a couple of other tabs with more more data in here but this is really kind of the probably the more interesting stuff 
Um, the, the one thing I will say is um, during this testing, uh, it, it, it unfortunately kind of late in the game became really apparent that um, the amount of memory in the, these nodes was really um, having a, a big effect on, on the performance results because uh, each of these nodes has 64 gigs of RAM and with multiple nodes, that's enough that even fairly large RBD volumes have a significant amount of cache data for random reads. So I manually had to go through and inform the kernel on the nodes to only use um, eight gigs of RAM. That it was really the only way to to restrict the amount of buffer cache that file store could use. So just if you're doing any of your own testing like this, um, uh, there's there's a pretty substantial effect from caching, even even in cases where you're using quite large volumes. So uh, just be aware of it if you're doing your own performance testing. It, it you know, it's it it seems kind of um, obvious when you say it, but when you're in the middle of testing, sometimes it, it can be easy to forget just how how much of one there is. So um, anyway, that's uh, that's that. Anything else on your end, Radoslav? Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Sorry, uh, I've lost my uh, network. Uh, had to switch uh, to mobile app application. Uh, what uh, any... I missed in last, in last uh, well, let's say, three minutes? N nothing really important, honestly. Um, <laughs> any Anything else that you want to add? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Well, we've. I think there's probably still plenty of investigation to do, but um, maybe the only other thing I'll say is that there's there's really wide performance swings here, right? I mean, we're talking about in the sequential read case, you know, a, a swing of like almost 200%. Um, and in some of these other cases, it's, it's fairly large too. So we're 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 really looking at important critical parts of the, the, the read and write path, I think, um, I guess read path in this case, but um, it, it's it's the right thing to be looking at. It's, it's just that we're seeing quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of variation. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to dig into it more and kind of um, uh, figure out kind of the optimal way to do all of this. And that's it. <laughs> All right. Is there any? I mean, we just talked about that. Um, I'll go into the CSR. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Wrong button. Um, we talked about a bunch of the the async OST stuff last night. Um, anything else that we should cover now? Um, Peter, I just rediscovered your CRC cache patch that looks just fine and much simpler. I'm tagging that one for QA. Cool. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think if there are other um, patches that are sort of floating around that um, that we want to look at that we've forgotten. Um, this one, I think we're going to close. There's still an issue with the um, allocator in Blue Store. Um, it can become sort of pathologically fragmented so that it fails. Um, Igor had a pull request there. We need to pick a solution. I'll put that on the list for the Blue Store discussion tomorrow, I guess. Um, I guess that's hey, Sage. Yep. Um, since we have Adam here, would it be worth talking about 
the C star mem store thoughts that you had? Um, sure. Yeah, one of the one of the things that came up last night was that perhaps we should. Um, um, it might be a little bit early still, but at some point make a uh, mem db mem store implementation that uses futures. I don't know how valuable that'll be because it'll be um, it'll never block. Um, but we could probably make a mode where it'll sort of do a synthetic block where it just says IOS will take this long. <laughs> yeah, we could install delays, or we could run. get um, yeah. <clears throat> like there are there are NV dim simulators. We could probably plug into it if we really wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I could I could take the uh, the one we sort of have that is mostly uh, there and hack it up to be more Ceph like and um, you know do that. Mm -hmm. It might be it might be premature because we don't have any of the other stuff ready to go. Um, it might be that we're still better off focusing on the messenger side of the equation and some of the other infrastructure. But um, at some point, that's I think that's going to make sense. All right. Um, Actually, it's kind of useful to to, to to be able to validate them in parallel, the two parts of the stack, right? By passing mm -hmm. messenger. By passing the other the bottom end. Yeah, we just don't have anything that will exercise an object store well, with a future futures interface. Well, such things existed in the past, so we could maybe, maybe we should yeah. revisit, revisit how to attack that. Yep. Um, it might, it maybe it's just useful an exercise to just to sort of lay out what the um, interface would look like for things like because all the remethods basically will have a future for completion, like get adder and exists and collection list and all that stuff. So maybe that makes sense. Um, so that when we when we do sit down and start thinking about how the OST code is going to change, we actually have an interface to line up against on the other end. But, well, that's actually I something I was curious about. I wasn't sure if the plan was to make sure that every um, Object store method has its own uh, futures based interface, which is sort of what I designed around the first time. Or if we were going to want to try to uh, model the um, the system that we have now, where we have a do stuff interface and we batch up a transaction, well, transaction thingy and send it down there. For, I mean, for writes, we have the like do transaction, but for reads. Oh, uh, yeah, I, now I remember. The, that makes sense. Often. Yeah, I think the yeah. reads have to be have to be feature space because they can't block ever. Right. Um, yeah. And even the transaction would be future space. It would just be a whole bunch of write operations stuck together. Yeah. Yep. Would we more or less keep the same concept of transactions for writes then? I think so. Like for raising it differently, I mean, or I mean, is there any, is there any hope of unifying this this at a at an API level such that even if effect even if, you know, if the, even if the, even if the execution path is always synchronous, we still have a, a, a uniform construction. Well, I mean, I think the nice thing about the features interface is that it is it hides whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, right? <laughs> Well, as, re as, re as regards synchrony, yes, but I mean, reads being reads being direct operations versus. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like to see a unification in some manner. I mean, there's really no reason. There's no reason in principle why we couldn't have direct write operations if we wanted to use them for some purpose, and to have the option of sticking read operations in a transaction on the object store level. I think. I mean, we slowly ripped out all the direct write operations because everything is simpler to have everything go through a transaction, and in practice, everything should go through a transaction. So, well, that makes um, sense. on the reads inside a inside a write transaction, the question is, what is that? What would that accomplish? <laughs> like, because nobody is there to do anything. But by the time the transaction is submitted, you already know what you're going to write. Doesn't seem like that would necessarily be 
useful, but given the uh, the model where we prepare a transaction that is then sent to lots of people that they all have to apply. Um, I don't know if it would necessarily complicate things that much. Well, it shouldn't complicate things that much in principle if we're using something futures based, I wouldn't think. I mean, if we wanted to, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know what, to, what would use it, I guess. That's what I'm wondering is, it, does it bias anything? I don't think, I don't think so. Because if any part of the transaction depends on a read, then we're screwed because we can't have prepared the transaction ahead of time and replicated it. Well, that's kind of a diff <clears throat> that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of a those are kind of independent concerns. I know they're they're, they're the same in one model of <laughs> PG backend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, that's just that's just something that I've wanted to see. I, I, it's not it's not it's not more important than getting in the performant object store, and it's not and it's not incompatible with it. But <clears throat> or. Can you art can you articulate what it would be used for? I guess I, I'm having trouble imagining what we would use it for. Well, probably um, maybe not in this discussion, but I can. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it, the, the things that I mean bluntly, the things that would be useful for are things that currently violate the semantics of Rados. <laughs> um, but in, but but it's more general. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, I forwarded an email um, of a short email exchange that Alan and I had about what a new picture might look like. Uh, his his view of what the a log structured tree ish thing should do, which is an interesting an interesting read. Um, that's all I have though. Anything else we should talk about? All right. Sounds good. Have a good Thursday, everyone. Farewell. Happy All Thursday. Right. <laughs> See you guys. See you later, everyone. Yeah. Bye.